in order to run Cobalt CPP on your phone, you are going to need to have Android. Next thing you will need is you will need Turbux. There is a version of Turbux available on the Galaxy Play Store. This will not work. Instead, you need the version that is available from F-Droid. So just go ahead and Google search F-Droid, and it's going to be f-droid.org. Download the app, install it, and it should run fine just like any other app. Once you've installed it, you'll need to search for Termux Terminal. There's multiple different things for Termux. Just find the one named Termux Terminal and install it. Just go ahead and then open it. Once it's done, first things that you're going to do, Termux-change-repo. Give it a moment to pop up and hit OK. OK is just the inner key. Then you're going to find the one named Mirrors by BFSU. Use the arrow keys to move, navigate to it, hit the spacebar to select it, and then hit the enter key. And give it a few minutes to update everything. Once it's done, you'll need to run PKG, install wget, wget that is, git, or git, and python. It'll ask you if you want to continue, just hit yes, or rather enter. After a little bit, it's, after a little while it will be done, just go ahead and type in the next command, apt install open SSL, or oops, type. It shouldn't ask you most of these questions. This is because I've previously had it installed. Here you're going to be typing in the commands git clone and the full path to Cobalt CPP's GitHub. I will include it in the description. If you see this error message, you may need to update some things. So for that, you're going to be running package update and apt update. Once again, it's going to ask you to confirm your change and stuff. You will also need to run package upgrade, PKG upgrade and apt upgrade. Now once you've gone ahead and finished installing the updates and you've done the apt install for OpenSSL, you're going to be needing to wget or you're going to need to git clone Cobalt CPP. After you git clone it, cd to Cobalt CPP and then run the command make. Now the next thing you need is you need a model that can fit on a phone. In our case, we are going to be using the model Cobble Tiny. Cobble Tiny is made by the developers of Cobalt CPP. Next thing you need to do is you need to go to the files and find the version that will fit best with your use case and right click on the download icon and select download or rather copy link. Paste it in your browser or notepad or whatever else, and this will tell you what you need. You only need up to and not including the question mark followed by download equals true. And then you will be typing that in to your phone as part of wget. So wget in that full path. You might be able to copy and paste depending on how your keyboard functions.
Now finally, you can just run the command to actually run the program. That command is going to be python coboltcpp.py followed by dash dash model and you can use the tab character to autocomplete the cobalt CPP and also the model name. So dash dash model dot slash the model file name. Just go ahead and start typing it and hit the tab character to complete it. It shouldn't take too long to actually open up and it will say connect to the endpoint at localhost colon 5001 and you just open it up in your browser. And now you're running your own AI model entirely on your phone. If you are run wondering, you can access this by your phone's IP address from your computer. This will enable you to use it for say the Henrika mod or whatever else you might want. So one of the things that I was asked about whenever I was making the previous video is can I run this? And the answer is probably yes. Most things newer than around say 2015 can run Cobalt CPP, but of course performance is variable and also intelligence is variable. So there's going to be something called number of B or number of billion parameters. Sometimes you might see a number of million parameters such as 500 million or 400 million. Those models are kind of gone now because they're too small. The number of billion parameters, for instance Cobble Tiny is 1.1 billion, is going to tell you basically how many brain cells it has. This is the number of parameters that can be used when calculating the result. The next thing that you have to take into account is Q or quant. Most models are trained at floating point 32 or FP32 and then released at floating point 16. They are then quanted down to quant 8, 6, 4, you might see a Q2, Q1, and Q5. I've never actually seen a Q7, but they probably exist. Let's say you're looking at a JPEG image on the internet versus a RAW file. If you take a RAW file with a fancy camera or say a nice Samsung, then it's going to be a massive file. Every single pixel in the image is going to have its own data saved. A JPEG, on the other hand, is going to compress that. An FP16 is more like a PNG, where it's compressed but you lose almost no data, versus the original FP32. A Q8 is like a pretty big JPEG and all the way down to a Q1 or a Q, well, a Q1 being an extremely small JPEG, one where you have artifacts all over and it just looks terrible. Now let's actually talk about what you need to run. If you are running a Q8, the general rule of thumb that I have is take the number of billion parameters and that is your basic, that is the amount of RAM you need or video RAM if you are running it on a video card. So a 1 billion parameter model needs 1 gigabyte. A 70 billion parameter model needs 70 gigabytes. A 8 billion needs 8, and so on. For a 4x8b, you're just doing the math there. So for instance, if you're looking at a 4x8b, you need 32 gigabytes. The next thing to take into account is the context. A model has a number of tokens it is trained on. This is the context. 
token is basically one term in its vocab. That could be a word, could be a phrase, it could be a single character. Most Llama 2 models, base models, are trained on 2048 context. Most newer models are being increased to 8192 or more. For every 2048 context, I would say add 1 gig. So for instance, you start with this, 1.1b, that's 1 gig, so now you're making it 2 gig with a context of 2048. This is just a rule of thumb, and many factors could change it. Next thing to take into account is the quant. A smaller quant is going to be bigger. Or a smaller quant is going to use less RAM. My rule of thumb here is start with the Q8 as what I said before. So let's say we're doing 496 with this 8B. That's 10 gigs roughly. Now my rule of thumb is multiply it by or remove 15% of the previous. Not of the total, but of the previous. And even though you're not seeing a Q7, I still take Q7 into account. So if we're saying the Q8 is 10 gigs, then it's times 0.85, Q7 would be 8.5. Q6 is, Q6 on the other hand is seven and a quarter roughly. Q5 is around six. Once again, the RAM usage is entirely a general rule of thumb starting point. It's to see, am I within any reasonable range of running this?